All right, so this is on your, um, it's on the module from t three, what were we on? 3A, because that's kind of what it covers. It's not on your to-do list yet because it's the due date's too far out. So it is there. You can open it. It's published. Uh, if you go to your calendar, you'll see it. But it is, um, but it's too far out for it to be on your to-do list. So this is an optional extra credit opportunity. If you're sitting pretty with your grade right now, you don't need to do this. But if you obviously, you need the help now, obviously do it now. Or if you know you want to like pay it forward to your future self, I would say take advantage of it. Um, I'm going to give you five to 10 points on a test grade. So it will just go in as an individual grade test point. So technically you only have one test in there right now. It will go to that. But by the time I grade these, you'll probably have two test grades. It just goes in as test points. So you don't have to tell me which test you need it on. It just goes in as test points. The idea is to get some extra practice on the sinusoidal functions. That is an FRQ. It is for sure one of your FRQs. Um, some of you did great on the test on those questions, and then some of you struggled on those. So it's not something that we can just like push to the back burner and not worry about it. That's going to be one of the four FRQs. It's a big deal. So your option is to do, and I gave you three, uh, one of the following. A word problem providing parts of a sinusoidal graph. Like here, there's something happening. We did one where like something floated up or down and the maximum height is this and the minimum height is this and it takes this long to either hit max max or min min or full period. Like you can give those information, that information in different ways. Um, and then you'd be asking whoever's completing the problem. So we're going to say like the student to find the equation of the function to identify the amplitude, the period, the frequency, etc. It could be displacement. It could be anything based on that information, okay? The second thing is a word problem providing the equation of the function. So you have to come up with some sort of a model. Here, here's the idea behind the model. So it has to have an actual real world component um, that would produce a model. And then ask the student to graph the function, find the amplitude, the period, period the frequency, the maximum, et cetera, based on the graph. No, you can do either of them. Oh, yep, wow. any of them. One of the three. And the third is provide a real-world sinusoidal data, data given in context, meaning like the chart of data, but you've got to give some context. Like the one that I gave you before was temperature. The temperature went up, the temperature went down, it created some sort of a sinusoidal graph. And then you'd be asking the student to find the regression on the calculator and then follow up questions, predict something in the future, that kind of thing. Okay, so um, the points earned, it says underneath, if the question is written well and the answer, provided, the answer provided is correct, I'll give you five test points, okay? If you create a video animation, it doesn't have to be great, but if you can hand draw a video animation or you can put something in Keynote or put something in Canva, that would actually animate the behavior of whatever it is. So if we're talking Ferris wheel, then something would move around the Ferris wheel and then would then draw the curve on the sine curve or cosine curve. If it was, uh, you know, something bobbing up and down, then you make a little wave, you make it bob up and down, and then you transpose it onto your XY graph and you would show that it goes up and down, okay? It doesn't have to be perfect. Like, I don't expect us all to be amazing uh, animators, but at least giving that motion. I want to see a circular motion or up and down motion turn into the sine or cosine curve. Does that make sense? Okay. Then um, if you do that, then I'll give you 10 total test points. So not like five and 10, 10 total test points. So what you're submitting to this thing, and I think I have the due date set at February 12th, so you have 10 days, um, is a word problem not completed, just like you would see it as though it was given to you. Then the key to the word problem, so you're gonna duplicate that, and then you're gonna work out the answer. And then if you are gonna go for the video animation, then that would be submitted as a media upload. Questions? Okay. So this weekend, I'm sending you away with no homework. This would be a good opportunity to start to work on it, okay? Obviously, it, and we won't, you can ask me questions based on it, like during the week, if you're, if you're asking like, is this look right, blah, 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 and you want feedback, I will certainly answer it, but I'm not gonna give you individual t class time to work on it because it's not required. So some people would be sitting doing nothing, okay? Questions? Yeah. 